Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Plapper Platypus is the name of today. We're talking about a alpha nuclear damage build. All right, we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. It's one of my favorite team ideas so far. Really quick before we jump into it, though. Thank you Womp, to my now 15 members and supporters. I really appreciate that. Um, you guys make it all more fun to do. And you know what? When it comes to playing video games, fun is super important. Anyway, let's jump into the video. So one quick note before we really, really start is um, I got a couple comments yesterday kind of talking about, oh, I wish you would show the team more. You go over the team a little fast. So I'm trying to meet in the middle ground here between, right? Listen, you can't please everybody, all right? Some people will say, hey, this guy never gets to the point. He rambles on far too long uh and takes too much time repeating everything and then other people will say you're going too fast i can't even pause to watch your stuff right so i'm trying to meet in the middle but basically what i mean by that is when it comes to a, a team like the one we're going to talk about today when it comes to the things that don't matter that much like the tactics or the weapons for like the witch um I'm not going to talk about the things that much that really aren't important where they're like, they're basically pick your favorite. And also when I'm doing a team, this isn't like a copy paste of probably team that I'm telling you to do. I'm probably, I'm going to be trying to do it with like the least amount of units possible to do the concept. That way you can adapt the team to your fight because there's always going to be counters to anything. Um, and this team has its weaknesses too, but basically, you know, if, if like this having, is this being on this being off this doesn't matter right like it, it's never going to happen uh and her tactics like none of the, most of this stuff doesn't matter too much right um so i'm not i'm going to kind of gloss over the stuff that i think is less important while kind of more highlighting the things that i think are important so let us absolutely now talk about this team here so this is the tactical nuke and to give you just the concept the we'll show you the proof of concept later but the concept of what the team is supposed to do is dragoon dive now this is actually really important the dragon's war spear i have two of these i'm not sure where i got the second one but basically when you defeat when you beat dragon guard or whatever you'll get a um you'll get one of these right so this weapon is super important not because of the 20 physical attack which is pretty good not because of the 15 hp or the five initiative it's all the dragoon dive this is a two ap attack all enemies all enemies it does have only 100 potency but that's actually not that bad um i mean it's not good it does plus 50 potency versus ground targets so most targets in the game are going to be ground so that just keep in mind this this will do more damage if you're fighting ground enemies as opposed to flyers um the, the downside of this is that it's a one two ap but it's a charge attack meaning the first time your turn comes up you're going to activate the charge the second time your turn comes up, you'll actually use this ability. So, this is a slow ability. However, the proof of concept of this team is that we're going to Dragoon Dive twice before the enemy ever gets a turn. And then we're after that, the fight should be over. But hypothetically, if it's not, you could have a few more units do it. But basically, these three units, they are going to Dragoon twice, Dragoon Dive twice, and the enemy will never even get a chance to interact. Now, a couple things to note about this. One, um, this team will get a little bit stronger when you get your Wyvern up to 25 and get Dragon's Roar. Um, inflicts initiative negative 20 on all enemies. This will make it way more likely that the Dragoon act or the Wyvern actually goes first as they're not the highest initiative, but you could basically guarantee you go first most of the time without putting in too much effort because uh, you just don't need to worry about most of the time if you're slightly higher level than enemies anyway, this will just work. And mine's only level 11 and he has 30 initiative, right? Um, so, and again, the... The other really good ability here, the, I'm gonna you're gonna run into PP issues if you have this exact setup. But right now, I'm not worried about PP because I don't have the negative 20 initiative. But this ability gives you six initiative, 10 HP, and aerial wing. So before they attack with a skill, the attack becomes a true strike and gives you attack boost. This is so good. You can get this by trading in the shards, the uh, divine shards. So not only are we gonna dragoon twice, dragoon dive twice. We're also going to make them true strikes and we're going to boost our own attack. So absolutely insane. 
Um, you could even do this with, um, you could add more buffs, right? You could add more dancer calls and things like that to just really, really buff this character's attack up to the moon if you want to go even more all in. But this is the bare minimum of what you need. So that is the Dragoon setup. Dragoon's War Spear, and then, right, damage, damage, damage. And this makes it a true strike, so you don't need to worry about missing. Then you're going to have Dragoon Dive. Sorry, hiccups. <clears throat> Second which makes this team, all three of these are very important, but the second most important unit here is probably the Shaman. Again, this care, this will get a little bit stronger even when you get Defensive Curse at level 20 because you're able to debuff the um, magic defense and physical defense, even though it says attack, I'm pretty sure that's just a typo. Um, and the Guard Seal is kind of a big deal as well. So go ahead and um you'll pick that up you'll probably do that over passive curse passive curse is not that good but it lowers initiative which is like whatever i guess it's something um but really it's all about this white cat ear hood this is also an item you get from the divine shards quite a bit so this is not a super early game build but i mean i'm just entering the third region maybe a quarter to a halfway done with the third region so i completed like you know the center then i went to dragon guard now i'm in the third region so maybe even only halfway through the game right so like it's not like a late game thing either so i know i'm kind of in the way here for this but this item is super important it gives you quick impetus quick quick impetus activates after an ally uses an active skill allows the ally to act again and grants the target plus one ap so why this is so important one it takes four pp to use but it's worth it this will make it so your wyvern master uses dragoon dive they will start charging the second after they use their ability this will trigger allowing your dragoon your you know your wyvern to act again and giving them an a, a an ap going up to four ap meaning dragoon dive will have that'll be a full charge it'll come up like, immediately and it will activate and you will do your charge attack hitting everybody with a true strike uh you know attack damage boosted 150 aoe potency thing going on and you even get the ap so what happens after when they go when your second turn comes up and you dragoon dive and you use your aerial wing to make it so it's a true strike that's when the witch comes in the sorceress in this case that is when you need the frost brand tome you don't need this could be used on any character i'm pretty not any character but this could be used on you could also have a wizard here like it doesn't matter in this case um where's this at it's this it's the same basic item right so you could even use like an elven fencer or a priestess you don't need to use the witch for this but i always use the witch for this because she's kind of ice themed and honestly mine is just kind of a higher level than my wizard probably um but the frost brand tome this is in a spot directly behind i mean you probably know where it's at at this point but just in case if you come down to the swamps here to the labauge hamlet it's literally in this tower right here one of the best items in the game this tower right there don't miss that um we'll have to go back to a thing in a second it's right so now why that's so important is this what this item does is this gives you a uh, add magic damage and freeze to the allies next attack so this will add 50 potency of magic to this character's attack now i actually don't know if this adds the witch magic attack if her magic attack being higher makes it stronger or if it's this character's magic attack that makes it stronger um there is a chance that maybe you don't want the warrior's medallion or you want something that increases your th that part's not super important but what is important is the freeze so what this means is that when the combat starts you're going to use dragoon wars you know dragoon dive start charging you're immediately going to get hit with quick impetus making your charge complete and giving you a fourth ap then your character will go to attack with dragoon dive making it a true strike giving yourself an attack buff and then making it freeze everybody that's that's fucking fire bro so you're doing an aoe freeze everybody heavy damage true striking nuke but they're all frozen now so now because you have a character like this that's not going to deal any damage right they're just going to passive curse or ideally defensive curse if you have it um to make it so you deal even more damage um and this character is i currently have set up to not deal damage you could maybe add a different type of character like a second shaman maybe defense debuff a different row something like that but 
now they're going to stay frozen. They're going to miss your turn. So what's going to happen is drag your character is going to dragoon dive a second time, start charging, but everyone else is just going to sit around and wait. They're not going, we're not going. And then you're going to dragoon dive a third time or sorry, you know, on that third turn, you're going to dragoon dive again and actually do this attack a second time. And they will all unfreeze if they're alive. And when they're unfrozen, that's when you could have your care. I have my witch come back in and try to deal some damage again. And the shaman will never deal any damage. The druid now at this point. I'm still talking to them about their base classes because I used them in that, for that for so long. So that's the proof of concept. Again, just to quickly go over the equipment that's important. For the witch, it doesn't matter at all. You don't even need this pendant. You just want the frost brand tome and to have two PP. For the uh, druid, you want to have the white cat ear hood and four PP. So this gives you one, and then you have another one from something like this. The weapon doesn't matter. We don't even have one equipped. You need the dragoon's war spear, three PP, and ideally the heaven's wyvern reigns. This doesn't make you attack more, but it makes you deal more damage. It gives you initiative and makes it a true strike, which is way good. So, um, we're going to talk about we're going to show you what it's like in a fight but there is going to be there's there's things this is not great against right it's not good at its current stage with with just these three units at units that cover right so if, for if i go up against something like elaine he's going to cover and he's going to prevent someone from getting frozen and it may not be the total end of the world but it's it's going to kind of screw us up, especially if you go up against a character like this right now where she has free freeze immunity, right? So like this team will kick the, my team's ass, right? But most teams, even this, because we have true strike on our attack. So this doesn't matter literally at all. I mean, maybe this character gets to go before we go and they get lucky. Probably not. Um, but let's add something else here like a, um, I don't know, let's add a Bernice, right? So let's just say this is the team we want to use. Uh, and these teams are going to be it's going to be incredible against these teams so really you only have to worry about cover um you don't need to worry about dodging as much because of the true strike nature of the ability so let's go ahead and do some mock battles here so here's our three unit squad 15 11 and 16 and then we're going to go up against this four man squad of this is one of my strongest squads by the way the three vikings this is a team i'm going to do but it's a meme dream team it's it's a lot of fun but it's not really like, I mean, it, it clears content. It clears content, but it's not like nuanced. Um, but let's just kind of give an idea here of exactly how this team works, right? So it's important to have the highest initiative also. So passive curse, that doesn't even matter. I'd rather be defensive curse. So we dragoon dive. Quick impetus. Dragoon dive your second time. Use your aerial wing. Use your ice conferral. You attack with a true strike damage there they go one of them died and now you're gonna passive curse which again doesn't matter dragoon dive standby dragoon dive with another aerial wing so it's another true strike which is another damage boost and then you hit them all again so they never even got an action right so that is what the team does let's take a look how it works against travis here as well i actually don't know um i haven't tested this fight out so maybe she just comes in and kills us Oh, they've got the initiative. Okay. Give me a second. This is, this is, I guess this is because I'm trying to showcase how important the initiative is. All right. We're going to lose. All right. Give me a second. Can, can we slow you down? <laughs> all right. All right. We're going to get rid of tra Travis is good. <laughs> all right. But I need to have the most initiative. So if you get the negative 20 initiative, that's going to be a huge one here. So let's just put, um, is there anyone else that just dodges that I have? I don't think so. All right, just put Artemis here, I guess. Let's see if they do good against this. So yeah, the initiative is super important, as you could tell. But luckily, this this team only loses to myself. Now, oh, good hit. And then you can see Dragoon dive. We instantly go again with a true strike. We deal the damage. They're frozen. Now, if they're immune to freeze, this is also not going to work as well. But if they're immune to freeze, I would do this same exact thing. 
I would do the same exact thing, except I would make it so you do burn, AoE burn instead. That way you're increasing the damage and you could do two stacks of burn. But also keep in mind, this is literally with a level 11 Wyvern Master. This is how much damage it's doing, right? This character is not ripped at all. So like this is super, super strong, even in the lower with the lower level characters. Um, but yeah, that is the proof of con that is what the whole team's idea is. Um, as basically what I thought about it is I want, I didn't know what charge attacks were until I found this weapon, or I think I saw that the, there is the Trinity staff in, in the, uh, the other store too, but I didn't know what charge attack was, although I assume, but then I saw this and I was like, okay. And then I saw the white ear cat hood. I'm like, allow to instantly act again. Let's see if that works with that. Or if it doesn't, or if you need to wait a whole turn cycle, lo and behold, it does work. And then it's just a matter of adding freeze on that. And suddenly you got two massive AOE. I mean, I think this will be able to clear most content in the game, as long as you're outspeeding the enemy. Um, so you could add Travis here, right? To one of the rows and Travis will do an AOE initiative down on some of the foes while also being able to do like an angel boost right to the back row and then she could do a passive curse on the other row so you could basically outspeed everything i think in the main story pretty much guaranteed besides a few fringe situations so there you go i hope you use this team for good not evil but this is the nuclear strike dragoon dive build hope you like it much love for platypuses for platypus i'll see you on the flip-flops bye